All right, without further ado, please welcome Rusty Killer. Please come in, Rusty. How do I, am I in? Yes, you are in, Rusty. Okay, <laughs> I thought I was here. All right, hi everybody. <laughs> we're all here, look at us, we're all here. Uh, if you could bring your children someplace that lifted their spirits, heart, mind, body, and soul, would you bring them there? Yeah. If you could bring your children to a place that sparked their imagination and their creativity and their sense of wonder, would you bring them there? If you could bring your children and you to a place that oh, calmed your nervous system and inspired you and sparked your creativity and sense of wonder, would you go there too with your children? Yeah. And do you know where that place is? It's it's the outside. It's it's going outside. Going outside. Yes. Huh. Suddenly you step out out of those doors and there's there's no walls to bounce off of anymore. And children can use their voices in new ways. They can use their bodies in, in big ways. And huh, you can exhale and you can use your creativity uh, to make your outdoor space kind of an outdoor classroom, uh, a place uh, that really does spark imagination, creativity, collaboration, and that sense of wonder. And also thinking about saying yes to children and risky play, children taking it to the next level, all different kinds of play. And I am here now to talk to you about thinking about how, you know, no matter what kind of yard you have, if it's a natural playscape, if you're in the forest, if you have a totally uh, a man-made playground equipment with rubber surfacing, all of that is a great place to start. And what we're going to be talking about here is how to take it to the next level. Yeah, no matter where you're at, you can always take it to the next level. And when we take it to the next level, we're talking about making that environment a place that you can boost your children's outdoor play and learning. And I'm a play person, so it, we know that play is learning, playing is development, playing is growth. But for me, play for play's sake is good enough, right? I am all about it. And we know that that is like the natural flow of childhood, of development. And it's how we as humans learn and grow and find out about the world around us and who we are, the world within us, and how we connect with our, our fellow humans and we can connect with the world, how children connect with each other, how they connect with us, how they connect with the outside world. And play is not just children. There's lots of animals, uh, you know, and it's not just primates. And it's not just mammals. There's octopus and lizards, snakes. I've recently seen snake videos of snakes playing fetch. And so play is this natural innate thing that is how life develops and grows. And we as adults who work with children, we want to support that. Right? That's that's the good stuff. And we want to support that. And we can support it with our love and our creativity and our classrooms, our quality classrooms. And we can support it by what our outdoor spaces are like. And that's what I'm going to be talking about here today. Yeah. So... As we get rolling, the most important thing that I'm gonna to say tonight, today, is actually thank you. I'm gonna say thank you for the work that you do working with young children. 
it is some of the most important and beautiful work that there is. Being with young children who are awakening to their life on the planet, making sense of the world, and seeing how the world works and how they work. And it is not an easy job. From the outside, people might think, oh, that, that's fun. And it can be fun, of course, working with children. But it is also challenging and takes lots of creativity and patience and love and patience, more patience. And so I just want to thank you for the work, that work that you do, because it is, it is very important. Yeah. And so my job here is to think about, okay, well, how can I support you? As you are supporting young children and their families, I I'm here to support you and give you ideas about how you can take it to the next level. Yeah, how you can uh, have more fun in your outdoor space, how your children can have more opportunities for discovery and play and learning and growth and development. <clears throat> yeah, no matter what age they are, infants, toddlers, preschoolers, if you're working with school agers, the whole deal. And I'm going to be talking about kind of the three big ways that you can improve your outdoor space. One is the yard itself, making changes to your yard. I've got lots of pictures I want to show you, but so that's building things, a hill, a mud kitchen, winning a mud kitchen, uh, sand and water play, gardens, fruit trees, that kind of thing, Ad additions to your yard. So the second thing, if the first is your yard, the second is your stuff. That's the loose parts. Just like the building blocks and plastic dinosaurs or figurines in your classroom. The outdoor needs that too. And again, no matter what kind of yard you have, natural or man-made, it's that stuff that takes it to the next level, that adds the magic and the sparkle. So we'll be looking at that and thinking about, okay, what's a loose part? How do children use them? How can you get them? And also, how can you communicate with parents and licensors about why you might suddenly have all this loose junk in your yard? Okay, so the first thing was your yard, the second was your stuff, and the third thing what we'll talk about tonight is your yes. What do you say yes to and what do you say no to in terms of your children's play? That's where we kind of cross the line into risky play. And ultimately, if we want to be saying yes as much as possible. We don't want children hurt, of course, and we want to step in and say no when it's really an issue, when something really bad could be happening. But. Ah, we want to be learning and practicing taking deep breaths and in our minds, first watching children what they're doing. Before we say no, we see somebody carrying a stick, running with a stick. Before we step forward and say, put that down, you'll poke your eye out. We're learning new techniques, new knee jerk reactions to actually take a step back. Cover our mouth, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, and just watch. And more often than not, when we do that, we see that children are OK, that they have a plan. Oh, that stick. OK, that wasn't a weapon that they were just going over to the mud kitchen to stir their concoction. Oh, that was a magic wand. OK, OK, I'm glad I didn't say no. So we'll be looking at the things we say yes to and the things we say no to with the eye of taking deep breaths and knowing that play is vitally important for children's growth and development and risky play is important for children's growth and development because it's children doing what they're supposed to do, go from one level to another, 
You know, they're supposed to push the limits. Babies want to crawl. Crawlers want to toddle. Toddlers want to walk. Walkers want to run. Runners want to climb. Pretty soon, they want to get keys to the car and drive and leave home. So there is a natural progression. And it would be silly for us to, to say to a toddler, oh, don't try to don't try to stand up and walk. You're going to fall. You'll fall right on your bottom. Of course not. But when we see a preschooler climbing a tree or balancing on a log or running with that stick, that's a little harder to swallow than the toddler learning to walk. And so we need to remember it's a every it's a, just as valid as that toddler learning to l walk. The child climbing, the child pushing, the preschooler pushing the limits, climbing on the outside of equipment, balancing on the log, doing something they've never done before. And we want to support it. We want to make sure nobody gets hurt, but we want to support it. Yeah. How's that sound? So, as we think about children that we work with today or that we are serving today, um, and we're thinking about the, the environments that we're creating, and the spaces and places and stuff, it's often nice to think back to our own childhood, where we played, where you played. And so a quick show of hands, who here was a child once? Okay, okay, I see some hands. I mean, how amazing is that, right? We all pass through that portal of childhood. We all, that is human. We all do that. And so it's nice now, why don't we take a moment and actually think back to a favorite place where you played outside. This talk is about outdoor play, so let's think about outdoors. If you didn't play outside, that's okay. Think about a favorite place that you played inside. But when you think about your outdoor space, think about your favorite outdoor space. You know, with natural playscapes, we're always talking about multi-sensory elements. So think about the different sensory experiences that were there in your favorite outdoor place where you played. What did it look like? But what did it smell like? Or feel like? Or sound like? Or if there are things that you nibbled on, what did it taste like? Yes, and you put it in the chat. Let's, let's see what we got here. Making potions with mud and flowers, the brook, rivers and ponds, the woods, the bush. Running water, sitting on top of the monkey bars. Mud and mess. Mess. My bestie and I found a place in the forest we called Moss City. The old tree in the backyard, snow. The sand pit. Tree forts on the trails at my house and catching frogs. Grass, mud, and dandelion pies. Mm, mm. Yeah. Well, there's some beautiful memories and environments there, walking barefoot on pebbles. So we want to create these kind of experiences for children today. And even within a fenced-in area, we can make it feel like they're free-ranging. Were you a free range kid? Yeah, we want to bring these kind of experiences into our children's environments. And I'm sure you're probably already doing all sorts of great stuff. But it's that idea of like, okay, dandelions and mud. But that's not too hard to provide. But even if you have an all wood chip area, well, maybe there's an area that you can like scrape the wood chips back, put in some dirt, and put it, sprinkle in some wildflowers and grass, and just let it grow. You know, create your own jungles with berry bushes, 
and fruit trees. Yeah, mixing it up with the plants that we put in to create those opportunities. OK, so I'm going to jump in with pictures. Riding bike with friends out in the barn with the family. OK, so let's see here. Share. Share screen. Can you see the sky picture? Now I can't see you. Jump in and tell me if you can't. But I'm going to go here. So we can see it. Great. Thank you. So the outdoor space that you have, now we might just think of it as a playground, but I think of it as something more. I think of it as the introduction to the planet, to our home, to the outside world. And, you know, if we think about the planet, right, and young children, I think of them as like the great explorers. Like they are literally, when they go outside at home and working with you, when they go outside, they are experiencing a planet. They are exploring a planet in outer space. And that is amazing. So for us as adults, we kind of know we've been here. We've been around the block a bit and we know what season follows another. We know what weather is like and we know what animals and bugs and things live here. But for young children, they're discovering it all for the very first time. So then that outdoor space, that playground to me is a sacred space. That's the place where children are discovering the outside world. What is outside? So when it comes to your playground or your outdoor learning environment, their idea of outside is whatever you put out there. If it's play equipment, okay. But if it's maple trees that have the little little flowers in the early, early spring, or that you're tapping for maple syrup, or that rain down in colored leaves in the autumn. That is their impression of outside, a full sensory experience. And outside could be places to dig, could be hills to climb, could be the changes of the seasons. So what do we put in our children's outdoor spaces? Could be something as simple as sunflowers. Here we are gearing up for planting season. We can almost see it. We're getting closer. And so you could do first what this group did where they just greened a chain link fence. That's a nice thing to do. Or you can plant sunflower houses and huts and mix it up with different colors and styles of sunflowers. We can have quiet garden space. You could have a full man-made rubber play ground in most of your yard, but maybe in one corner you could do a little natural secret garden. And maybe you have some people, some parents or some other staff members or mem people in your family, or your community that have green thumbs that could help you. In just this one little corner. And what is this? It's just some stepping stones and a nice variety of plants with different textures. It doesn't have to be huge, especially because the user group, they're not huge. Yeah. So small changes can still make big differences in your outdoor space. And digging, you know, the loose stuff you put in could also be tools. So children can really dig in and experience the seasons and the earth. 
But again, thinking about the seasons. It's nice to, you know, as children are learning to read books about the seasons, about autumn. Or you can watch a video about autumn, draw pictures about autumn. But when, what if when they go outside, they are experiencing autumn? Then it's different, different places that you live. But that idea that they are doing it, living it, experiencing it in a full body way, full sensory way. And that could be because of the plants and the trees that you choose to put in your yard. And if you get nothing else out of this presentation, maybe it's to plant some trees or plant one tree. Yeah, one tree can make all the difference for your children and for you, for the seasons, for wildlife that it invites in. Yeah, that could change a whole play environment. And then winter, we want children out in all seasons and all weather. You know that saying, there's no bad weather, just bad clothing. So that's for inspiration to have all the snow pants and have all the snow boots. I'm, I'm talking to Canadians, so, you know, I, I know you got this stuff. You got this stuff. But we don't want clothes to be a limiter of getting our, letting our children be outside in different kinds of weather, whether it's snow or the mud season, which may be coming upon us. And then thinking about the natural world and how it provides. Yeah, it can provide for play. So this is was a flower of an allium bulb, and when it was in bloom, it was a big purple poof ball, like a Dr. Seuss flower. And then after the flower is done, it's this interesting seed pod, which then can be used for play. It can be used for play when it was the purple flower too. Uh, but here, nature provides. And in her hands, what is it? Is it a magic wand? A supernova? Her spirit? All the above? Yeah. So as we're thinking about adding more plants to our yard, we can think about them in terms of play and what kind of props they could provide for play. Look, free range children. Yeah, that's what we're going for. Environments that invite children to play and discover. But not this. See, this is called the outdoors. Oh, I've seen this level on my video games. It's the only way we can get the kids into the garden. No, no. What do you think these children are doing? They're watching a screen. This photographer did a whole photo shoot of children watching screens. And sure, they, we're, we're, we're on screens right now. You're watching a screen. I hope it's, I hope it's stimulating. Uh, and it can be stimulating, but we're talking about the real world. We're talking about outdoor play, fresh air, Loose parts, endless possibilities. And the stuff, we put things out there, we never know how children will use them. Yes, real life experiences. How do we say yes to play? How do we create environments that support play and learning? Okay, in review, the three ways to boost outdoor play, your yard, your stuff, and you, your yes.
All right, I'm going to go through that sequence here uh, a few times, and you can just see, like, no matter where you're at, you can add one of those things to your yard to take it to the next level. For example, what if you're like, we want a sand pit? Yeah, all right, let's build a sand pit. Hey, I know where there's some uh, a tree that just came down in our neighborhood. We could get somebody to chainsaw the, the trunk up and that could be part of our retaining wall. Okay, I know where we can get sand. Oh, well, we can also get some garden tools, um, you know, for digging and, and mud kitchen stuff. All right, let's build a sand pit. So that's an example of doing something for your yard, making a change. The stuff part could be like, all right, we have a sand pit, but we didn't really have things to dig in it. But now let's take it to the next level. Let's add the stuff. And so that's mud kitchen stuff and spoons and pots and pans, sifters, that kind of stuff. And that's kind of neat. They have it adjacent to the sand area on that trellis under the deck. And they have the logs there as the retaining around the sandbox. So that's the stuff. But how about your yes? How could you say yes to something that maybe wasn't your original intent? And let's say with these logs. Oh, we were just thinking those logs were for the holding the sand in, uh, designating the sand area. But children want to climb on those. I wasn't picturing that, but oh, they want to do it. And maybe that's de developmentally appropriate. Maybe they're learning balance and resilience if they fall off and get back on. Maybe it's a rite of passage. Oh, maybe there's lots of positive reasons that we would say yes to that. We didn't think of that at first. Okay, here's another. Your yard. The first thing could be we put play equipment in. Okay, that's a good investment. It's going to last a while. Strong stuff. There's still a nice green strip back there. Maybe that's where you can load your sunflowers, plant some stuff, use that back fence for some interesting things. So, okay, your yard, you're, you're putting some equipment in. Well, how about here's the stuff, adding stuff to your play equipment. I, I think of this as children improving on the play equipment. So that's pretty simple. Doesn't cost a lot of money. Cardboard, some boards, tires burlap sacks yeah okay so adding stuff and then how about saying yes to something that you never said yes to before somebody climbing on the outside of the equipment wait i'm not supposed to say yes to that or are you if somebody's ready for that if if that girl has climbed up every set of stairs and climbed up every slide and climbed up everything, she's a climber. Why isn't this an appropriate thing to climb on? An activity testing the limits, you know, that's some uh, resiliency and some grit. Yeah, maybe that's OK. And we didn't think we could say yes to something like that, but maybe you can say yes to that. And then you can take it to another level of like you're helping children do something riskier with the play equipment that you already have. Hmm. Saying yes. OK, here's another sequence. Uh, adding a hill to your to your yard. Yeah, that's a good addition. Hill and hillside, how about? Pretty good. Okay, stuff. This was a, they had apple trees there, so they were uh, letting children play with the apples and then having the little you know, buckets. You know, come off of video. I did the idea first. I don't mute them. Having buckets for the sand, for the apple play, taking it from the sand pit, having it for the apples in the slide, using the slide for a different thing than sliding down yourself. And then your yes could be oh, gasp, letting children 
climb up the slide. Yeah, that seems like a good thing to do. OK. Does anyone have any questions so far? We can dive e into each one of these. Topics. Yard. OK, so. You could do full transformations. Maybe you have a giant budget and you want to do a full transformation. So I work with folks like you to do designs and master plans. And I would work with all sorts of interesting before shots of yards like this one. And this is in Portland, Oregon, this interesting bi-level space surrounded by buildings. So we thought, all right, well, let's use that bi-level space and have a sand pit down below and different ways to get down into it. There is part of the transformation. Hill slides and stepping stones and boulders and. Playhouse. Water play. Here's another. Long Island, New York, big, huge sand yard. This is a community church preschool. And we turned it more into a children's like a park. Playscape Park with hills and stepping stones. Another hill sli slide, gazebo, giant sand pit. But you don't have to do gigantic things to still make a gigantic difference. Yeah, even smaller things. So let's just look at a few small things. Now you could do the full transformation, but you know, we're just thinking about small projects, maybe spring spruce up projects. And maybe one could be doing a mud kitchen. Or maybe it's first building having a mud kitchen. Maybe it's first winning uh, quality classrooms, nature to play, rusty keeler designed mud kitchen. Or maybe it's taking your mud kitchen to the next level. Adding an umbrella, adding more stations, adding more pots and pans. Or something like this. Now there's a, a neat counter and the sink right there. And that's kind of like that alone could be the quality classrooms mud kitchen. But then you start adding the pots and the pans and the Adirondack chairs and more utensils. And then, you know, maybe the next season you add somebody had brick. Extra bricks from a building project. So you're like, all right, let's make the floor of the mud kitchen brick. And then somebody had some planters who were like, all right, well, let's really designate that mud kitchen as a full, like it feels like it's a room that you go inside of and we'll have little planters. And then there again, there were some logs. Somebody's uh, tree fell in someone's yard. And they chainsawed it up for you. So you made the little cafe tables and benches and seats. But I love this mix of all the textures, you know, and you have the little tree planted there, but there's wood chips, there's brick, there's the stage, the wood next door. Or like this, a mud kitchen gazebo. In the sand area. Still, still call it a mud kitchen. But pretty awesome. You know, and you might have your own aesthetics. Maybe you like things a little tidier or maybe not. Well, here's a nice. Rusty Keeler designed mud kitchen sold by quality classrooms. Yeah, I mean, maybe you have the manpower and volunteers to help you build stuff, which is great. Or maybe you uh, have some funding and you can buy some nice pieces of furniture. That's great. I can tell you a lot of love went into the design, thinking about the design and building of these. And it's part of a whole collection. We have there's water play and loose parts, some neat furniture. I have this double Adirondack chair here at home with this with a spool. We love it. The kids are all over it. It's made with uh, very lightweight, but rot resistant wood. 
it's got this thermally treated. It's basically been toasted a certain way so it doesn't rot. And I've had the pieces of this kind of wood uh, outside in the mud, in the snow for years, and it still holds up great. So pretty fun to have these kind of things. And there's all sorts of like tables for outdoor classroom or doing art projects or having snack and lunch on. And even little garden beds. Yeah, so thinking about how you can blend the plants with your play area. And so back to the mud kitchen, I love this idea of like, maybe you already have a mud kitchen, but maybe the taking it to the next level is planting next to the mud kitchen so that children can snip like the dandelion mud pies. And then as we think about planting like the sunflowers, I am all about abundance. Maybe you are too. So it's nice to plant a few sunflowers or a pack of sunflowers. But what about this year if you planted a million sunflowers? Really, literally a million. Or at least half a million. And all different kinds. And children could use them for whatever they wanted. You know, saying yes to it all. So that there's enough that, uh, you know, not all, all of them will survive their adolescence, you know, but children can pick them or they can pick them as they're growing or they can pick the leaves for play or as the flowers are blooming, they can pick the petals for play or there's enough that they can pick the heads and put those in the mud kitchen. And then the seeds are there and the seeds can be part of play or the seeds can be for the birds. And then when the frost hits and everything's brown and crunchy, then th those parts could be used for play. So I say put in tons, plant a million sunflowers. And then you can get creative how, of how you how you plant them. Plant a sunflower house like this, planting the sunflowers in a circle or a square and have a door opening. They have a blanket inside this one. And you could have benches. Some quality classroom Adirondack chairs in there, nature to play Adirondack chairs or some good old fashioned stumps inside. Living willow. Now's the time to plant your living willow hut, living willow tunnel. Or maybe you can make some more informal little forts and dens. This is just some like driftwood off of the beach at a nearby lake lashed together. And then having beans and flowers, vines growing up over top. And then as we think about different kinds of plants for play, often people are saying, well, what's safe? What's a good plant for play? I like what this group did. Kale. They let their kale grow tall. It's like a kale forest. Yeah. You know it's safe to nimble on. Or how about this? You don't have to buy anything. You just designate an area for digging. And let them go for it. Some shovels, some waters and buckets. Maybe some place, some far corner. And you just say yes. And that's the thing. When we say yes, and we don't say no. Beautiful things happen. Beautiful things are created. Stuff that we adults would, would never imagine. So we want to say yes as much as possible. And saying the yes and, and adding the spaces, it doesn't take a lot of money. Something as simple as that, just designating an area for digging and seeing what happens. And then adding stuff, the loose parts. And so like that idea of the digging area, a mud kitchen. Now you may be thinking, oh, I hope I win that mud kitchen. But really, 
you don't even need the mud kitchen to have a mud kitchen. Maybe you just need the pots and the pans. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of us, if we look in our kitchen cupboard, there's probably a few pots and pans that are beat up enough that they're ready for the mud kitchen. Yeah, and you can put out the word to parents or to other staff members, family members, and you can create a little mud kitchen anywhere. But it's that loose parts, it's a loose stuff. You can have the fixed equipment, you can have, you know, your fixed yard, but it's the stuff that children can manipulate, that they can move, that they can create with, that adds the pizzazz adds the special quality to your outdoor space, which becomes never ending. It's infinite possibilities when you put the loose stuff out there. And just like building blocks in your classroom with loose parts outside, it's fun to build with the loose parts. And then it's fun to play with what you've built. And then it's fun to destroy what you built. And with the big stuff like this, tires and straw bales, you're sneaking in upper body development, big work, big muscles, and maybe collaboration because it takes a couple kids to drag around a straw bale or to roll a tire up to the top. Is that the greatest throne ever or what? Loose parts. Exploring the world with loose parts. Traffic cones. Classic. Oh, here it is, our game show part of the presentation. Are you ready to play? Which is the loose part? All right, I have a sequence here of items. And I'm going to show you, and I want you to guess which is the loose part. Ready? A cardboard box. B, a basketball. C, a stick. A, B, C, or all the above. Okay, next round. You, a flower. A chicken, A, B, C, or all the above. A cinder block, B, a leaf, C, a frying pan, A, B, C, or all the above. And last, last round, Plastic dinosaurs, a shovel, or a traffic cone, A, B, C, or all of the above. If you guessed all of the above, or if you guessed any of them, you're right. Yes, loose parts can be almost anything. Boards, tree cookies, pieces of logs. Pieces of logs and branches in the sand area. Wow, how awesome, awesome is that? Maybe you know somebody who's taking down a tree and you could get some branches chainsawed. Take any eye pokey branches, you know, off any little sticklers. So you could sand the edges smooth if you want. And then you put them in your sand area and say yes or don't say no. Stand back and just shake your head yes. Watch what happens. Right, the kitchen stuff, kitchen stuff with the natural stuff. There it is, yum, pine, pine cone mud pie, yum. Almost as good as dandelion mud pie. There it is in action. So many things can be loose parts. Worms, 
can be loose parts. Don't know if I'd want to be one of those worms, but okay, worms can be loose parts. Chickens, loose parts. Or even other animals. Is that a happy looking pig there or what? You got to watch toddlers. You got to watch toddlers. They'll try anything. But loose parts, loose parts let children express themselves. I guess this is a common theme around the world. I mean, that is, that's, that is an upgrade of that little scooter that he was on. And yes, the nature to play line has loose parts too. By quality classrooms, sold by quality classrooms. The crate, and there's boards, and the loose spool to roll around or to balance on. Again, with that thermally modified wood, lightweight to use, but rot and weather resistant. Nice stuff. Water play, hook it to a hose, and move the troughs however you want. Fill them with whatever you want. And back to other loose parts, boards and rope help you help children build their own swings. Weave in engineering and ingenuity, trial and error, experimentation. Deep play. The loose parts promote deep play. And the stuff that you have, that you put out there, also says yes to children by its nature. Maybe we, we don't put out stuff that's too precious. You know, the bucket and the pool noodle and the loose boards, they say to children, yes, use me how you want. Or something like this. This group had... Uh, church pew cushions donated as loose parts. But then the cardboard box. I'm all about the small steps. So even the cardboard box, what if you've got cardboard box from furniture stores or from appliance stores and you put it out there and you just step back and you let the play go. And again, from the adult perspective, we may think like, oh, we, I'd love to like redo my whole yard. I'm just putting cardboard out there. That doesn't seem like a big deal to me. But to children, from the child's perspective, you've changed the entire world, the entire experience. So even the smallest interventions, the smallest things you do make huge effects. A huge differences. And I'm going to show this at the end too that you could zap, but I have an outdoor loose parts guide that's free. And you can scan that and get to it. And you can also get to my newsletter where I'm always putting out fun resources and little videos to inspire you to take your outdoor play and learning to the next level. And then last here, well, think about your yes. What do you say yes to and what do you say no to? Oh, our second game show part of the evening, part of the day. What is your yes? I have 10 pictures here. What is your yes? What is your no? And what is your maybe? Let's see. What will you say yes to? I'll start easy. Say yes to flowers and children. How about chickens and children? 
How about logs and children? How about logs and children jumping with sand forks in their hand? Tree climbing? Should children climb trees? Mud kitchen? Muddy mud kitchen? Mud? Yes? No? Maybe? Children and fire. Okay, and I saved the most controversial for last. Children going up a slide. <gasps> yes, no, maybe. What can we do to say yes? How can you say yes? Wood chips, putting the soft cushions in. What do you say yes to? Where can you bring children for adventure? Exploration outside of your fenced in area. Or how do you use your fenced in area in new ways? Maybe it's not even about risky play. Maybe it's just saying yes to new ways of doing things. Like, why don't we eat outside? Could we nap outside? Maybe we do art projects outside. Maybe we rake our leaves in a new way. Oh, what's he going to do? Or maybe we just don't say no when we watch and observe the flow of play. What these children are doing, paint and Hot Wheels cars. Now, somebody might say, no, that's not what the paint's for. That's a waste of paint. But somebody else might say, that's the greatest use of paint ever. And what are children learning? And how are they collaborating? And what does that feel like? And, you know, if you've selected paint that's washable, it'll all wash off. But maybe we can take deep breaths. Maybe we can say yes to things we never thought of before. And when we see things happening that we never thought of before, maybe we don't knee-jerk reaction and say no. Maybe we just watch and we say, why not? And I'll, I'll end with this little story here of, of kind of a saying yes and not saying no at this winter space, which was the Kale Forest place. Amazing what a change of seasons, you know, the change that things go through. It's incredible. But I was visiting this space, family child care, uh, a wintry day, nice sunshiny day. And then at some point, the children noticed that because the sun was out, things were starting to thaw a little bit and water was drizzling out of the gutter. And you can imagine some teachers saying, no, no, get away from that. You're going to get wet. Your snowsuit's going to get wet. But this teacher did not. And when because she did not, the children got to explore. They got to discover. And they got to, with their sense of wonder, seeing a beautiful, wondrous spectacle. Simple, and yet they're seeing the magic of life. The jewels of the water in winter, seeing the water. And what does that feel like? 
And what was that like for those children? A moment of wonder, a moment of beauty, a moment of magic. And you can make that happen by the yards that you create and the stuff you put in those yards and the things you say yes to. Yeah. And here you can zap this and I can send you some some resources too to follow up. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. I like it. Our mantra, that's our new mantra. Good. And you can find me, my website, rustykeeler.com. Um, I love talking about this. If you have questions, um, you know, we can chat about it. Um, I help folks. I do remote consulting. I do master plans. I do a, what would Rusty say about my yard consulting um, and and talks and all sorts of stuff. Online classes. I have a, a master a design class coming up soon and I do out, I lose parts and risky play classes too. So I, lots of ways to connect. But thank you for connecting today. <laughs> All right, thank you, Rusty. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Yes. All right. Um, thank you so much for everyone for joining the webinar today. Uh, thank you for keeping the the etiquette uh, mics off, and you share a lot of great story with Rusty to, uh, today too. You give him questions. You share your personal story. Uh, as for Rusty, um, you did great. Uh, I love how you uh, interact with uh, with us. You ask questions, and uh, the presentation was great, and I definitely learned a lot. So thank you again, Rusty. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're welcome. Thank you. All right, now to the uh, exciting part. Uh, mm -hmm. Before I announce the winner of the webinar, uh, we will have another webinar potentially in September. So every time we do webinar, we, uh, we make sure to in invite great speaker like Rusty today. Uh, certificate will be given out and uh, always we always do a big giveaway. So make sure to follow us on social media. Uh, it's on the top right here. Or join our mailing list for uh, more details. Mm -hmm. All right, 